Hello, Colin from Video Revealed here. I'm making this tutorial for a few people that asked about the tickers that they bought from Video Revealed and how come they get cut off. I'm going to show you a couple of, of important steps that um, I thought I outlined uh, enough, but I'm going to make really clear this time. So if you haven't seen my ticker, I'll put a um, link in the description where you can grab a whole bunch of tickers. These are tickers that run along the bottom. Doesn't require After Effects or Illustrator or Photoshop files. Everything is built in to the Mogert that I created. So I'm going to drag one in and I'll show you the kinds of things that, that might cause it to cut off. That's what folks are saying. So let's have a look. So at the top, I'll go to my graphics workspace. All right, and I'll make sure that on the left-hand side might be kind of hard to see here because the name of that is very long, but I want to go to the effects controls. And I'll drag in one of my tickers. Let's just go with uh, something simple. Let's do this chat bubble one. I'll drag that in. And I've created them with a certain duration. They're a one minute duration. And when you play them, they start with a graphic. Uh, some of them do anyway. And the words pop out and start scrolling from right to left. If you click on the Mogert on the title, in the effects controls, you can see the keyframes. So the first keyframes here are the animation for that little chat bubble to pop up. And what you need to look for is the text. So this might be in your version, all of this stuff might be closed up. And you'll see the shape, and then you'll see the group, and then you'll see a shape and text, depending on, on the title, because some I had to create because this particular um, text comes in and the shape is round, I had, I had to create a way for, to make the text come out from a round edge. So you may not see as many shapes, but you look for the text and twirl this down. If source text is open, you can twirl that up because you just want to look for this. Another easy way to do this is to come down to this little filter and choose show only keyframed properties. This turns everything off except the keyframes. Just remember you've turned this on because the next time you want to use a different parameter like motion or, or opacity, and it's, it's, it won't be there because there's no keyframes. So you have to remember to come down here and turn on show all properties when you're done. But this is just an easy way to figure this out. So. Where is the position information? And this is where I think people are confused because there's position information here in vector. Oh, I'm going to turn this back on. Vector, position, vector motion, and then down below everything down here, motion, position, and then there's position for the text. So like I said, I'm going to go to my keyframed properties and just show that. So the text layer, and you can see it's selected, has position information. You can see the keyframes for everything that is blue. So there's a blue stopwatch. There are the two keyframes. So the, the scrolling of the text is created with only two keyframes. The first one, make it go all the way off the screen to the right. The second one, off the screen to the left. That's all it is. But there's also the duration because maybe the words you've pasted in to my placeholder text is longer. Well, then you have to do two things. You have to make the, the title longer on the timeline and you have to change the keyframe. So let's do that. Like I said, when you drag it in, it has a fixed duration, but you can drag that as long as you want. Here's the only caveat. You notice how this didn't change in the effects controls? The duration from here, from this left position to this right position, and this left position and to that right position, that's the same. But there's a nasty bug in Premiere Pro that does not update the, the effects control panel. So watch what happens when I move my mouse and I just jiggle this a little bit, move it, and 
Oh, this this has updated, but sometimes you you won't see that. Sometimes this keyframe will be way over there. So if you don't see what you want here, then move this around. Okay. So remember, I said this keyframe is the text all the way over to the right at the beginning. This keyframe is the text all the way over to the left. I changed the duration here, so I need to change the duration here. So now the text will leave a little later or sooner, depending on where you want. But even if this gets deleted, so even if I take that and delete it, just hit the delete key, now I don't have animated text because animation only occurs when you have two keyframes, where something was and where it's going. So if we just move to the place on the timeline where we want this to end, and then I come up to the to the position and drag this to the left. And if you add the shift key when you're dragging, it moves a lot faster. And you might have to do this several times. And then you let shift off when you get close. So now I've, I make sure, see there, that's where it is. And that's where my keyframe is. I completely recreated the second keyframe just by changing that position. Well, what if things are getting cut off, meaning that the edge of the graphic is gone? Well, if we go back to looking at all of our properties and we look at motion and you change this position, this can actually cut off the text. Anything with position in the motion section. Why is that? Well, first of all, look, look up here. There's vector motion and there's motion. When you create anything in Premiere Pro, doesn't matter if it's a graphic title or a clip, and you drop it in the timeline, it has a fixed frame size, unless it's larger than the frame size, but let's just consider this as the frame size. If you move something out of, of that in position, then you're cutting it off. It's not an infinitely scalable thing. That's with regular motion. Adobe introduced vector motion to get past that. Now, a vector motion only works with the new titles. It doesn't work with an, an image or it doesn't work with uh, video clips. So vector motion, you can scale stuff infinitely. It's kind of like what After Effects does. There is no fixed frame size. But I think what some people are doing is they're instead of changing uh, the text, they're adding text and changing the position of the text instead of changing it in the text position there. That's what I think they're doing. So always make sure you're, you're choosing that text. Also make sure you've got the right words in there because if it's getting cut off, maybe you didn't accurately copy and paste the text into that text. It's always best to work with a, a text editor or notepad or something outside of Premiere Pro to make sure you've got all of your text and there are no carriage returns. There's no hitting the enter or return key. It all has to be a flowing giant blob of text to, to show inside that. So those are the only reasons it will be cut off. The duration is wrong. It, it ends here. So the keyframe ends here. Um, and I could even show you that. You know, if we put that there, it ends right there. So some people might call that cutting off. Well, the keyframes are wrong. So that, that keyframe was actually going to the left to right. But the same thing applies. The keyframe number is incorrect and you need to push that further along the line. Or you don't have enough text or you have too much text or the duration in the timeline needs to be extended. There's no way to get around this. The, the, the titles don't know how much text you've put in. So I've done everything I can to make these easy to control, but you still have to understand the timing of the, the text keyframes, the duration on the uh, timeline, and the amount of words that you've created. 
All right, so I made this as an extra. This is a non-monetized uh, thing for the folks who have supported us and bought the tickers. If you want to grab the tickers, uh, you can you can uh, support us on Video Revealed. There's tickers, there's split screens that you can grab there. I'll also put a link to that in the timeline. I mean, in the time, in, in the description. If you want to support us some more and uh, grab the tickers, then jump on to uh, videoreveal.com slash shop where you can buy them there and uh, reach out to me. Sometimes people ask for things and they end up becoming uh, tutorials like this, uh, how to's or full blown tutorials, or I, I create brand new products that you can buy. Till next time, I'm Colin Smith. It's my job to listen to your comments, reach out and go out of my way to create a whole new tutorial just to help you out. Thanks for supporting me.